Okay, hey everybody, welcome to Choose Stream. So if you could see this right now, you can see that I have a photo today. This is going to be a slightly different exercise, but it's going to be awesome. Um, and for those of you that are interested in any kind of like character design, animals, things like that, this is totally going to be the uh, stream for you. Okay, so let's begin um, by downloading this file. Okay, so you could download this file whether you're on uh, live stream or you're watching this off of YouTube later on. Um, you can download this file by going to the post just below the video here and in the details you can find the link. Super simple. You click on that link and uh, go there and and uh, download the file. Okay, so this way we're all working off of the same uh, photo and it's going to be fun. So you can see that the file name is Magnus. That's what this little guy's name is. His name is Magnus. Um, he's a, my brother's dog and uh, so I figured we can go through a little character design with this dog. Okay, so before we do that, um, for anybody participating in the streams, uh, I always encourage to put the hashtag ChewStream. Okay, when you upload it online, you can um, you can post on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and uh, I'll be able to find it. And as well, everybody else will be able to find it. And then we can all see each other's little uh, versions of Magnus. And I think it's going to be really fun. Not only that, but the ones that I like the most, my absolute favorites. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to post some of these uh, images and give some shout outs to some people out there. So here is a previous um, stream, a uh, choose stream exercise. Um, this is the first one. I want to show a, a few of them. This is another one. Really great ideas here, most of all, I think. Really great ideas, really appealing little story here. And then finally, we have this one. So three uh, people featured today. And if you want to be featured as well, all you need to do is uh, you know, submit your stuff with the hashtag ChewStream when you post it. So then we can all find them, OK? And uh, I want to be able to post at least you know, one or two of my favorites as we go along. So let's start off. And uh, this exercise takes a little bit of instruction. So first thing that we want to do, OK, very first thing that we want to do is just spend about 10 minutes copying this dog. And I know if you've been with me over these many streams, I'm always saying don't use um, don't use reference in the very beginning, right? Don't use reference in the very beginning. Those are for those specific um, exercises, okay? Now that you've gone through a bunch of them, I hope, um, here is another wonderful exercise that is really challenging. So stare at this photo because it's not going to be up forever. And I don't want you to look at it either. Okay, so this is going to take some willpower. Really stare at this photo. Don't just copy the lines. Don't just copy the little guy. Start to understand what makes this guy feel like this little French bulldog. So some things that I'm observing, of course, the, the pointy ears. Yeah, how pointy are these ears? How, how long are they? Um, the flat face, the round back of the head, the really stubby yet very muscular um, you know, front legs, and the cute little legs in the back. OK, um, there's a very obvious straightness in the back as well. And we can contrast that with um, the curvier lines on the other side, you know, describing the muscles and the little belly and the legs and so on and so forth. 
You can also see I put a slight indication of that shadow um, on the head, so that helps me to kind of make some notes on the different planes of the head. And like I said, we're only going to do this for 10 minutes, okay? 10 minutes, and then we're going to work on our own versions of Magnus without the photo. You could use this little study for a bit, but later I'm going to ask you to turn off the visibility of the study as well. So if you're doing this traditionally, you want to um, you want to do these drawings on separate pieces of paper. So this is the very first drawing. Okay, that way you'll be able to put away your drawing later. Um, and then it's all about visualizing again. You know, some people, they've been um, asking about reference. How do you use reference? Things like that. Because, as we know, lots of people use it. Um, the thing that I wanted to avoid with everybody is to have you guys... I don't want you guys to be too rely, uh, reliant on reference. So that's why so many of the previous uh, streams, if you check those ones out, um, you can see that there is no reference. Okay, the other thing I want to mention is if you have any questions, if this is your very first time on the stream, you can feel free to ask me any questions you want by typing it in to the chat. Um, and uh, just type in with capital letters, question to begin with. Okay, and then write, write your question. And of course, I, I definitely want to give some big shouts out to uh, all the wonderful people that always come and join in on the stream. Why don't you give yourselves a big round of applause? Give me a sh or let me know where you're from, and uh, I'll give you a shout out on the stream. And while we're waiting for um, everybody to start typing it, oh, here we go, Malaysia, Mexico, Ann Arbor. Uh, it's a question that just disappeared. New Mexico, Texas, South Africa, Israel, Quebec, Sao Paulo, Bulgaria. Holy smokes. Wow, they're coming in fast and furious. Uh, Italy, India, Israel, Brooklyn, Oregon. Okay. Okay, so um, I'm just going to try and track these questions down. And uh, hopefully, hopefully I'll be able to get to them. Czech Republic, awesome. It's so great to see the momentum building week after week of these streams it's it's actually very inspiring for me as well um, just to see you guys all into it and getting it understanding it and practicing it and even better than that seeing the improvement is tremendously encouraging for me so really really wonderful um, let's go to the very first question here okay so if you want to type in a question you could just type it in uh, with capital letters question before your question and then I'll be able to see it in the chat a lot easier okay so the very first question is um, is this a good exercise to do if you just started drawing absolutely Absolutely. All of these exercises are very much fundamental. When people say, oh, what should I work on? I got to work on the fundamentals. I got to work on the fundamentals. Um, this is for those kind of people that are looking to work on their fundamentals. Something that kind of encompasses all ways of thinking 
and helps strengthen all different types of ways of thinking, like structure, like all the fundamental ways of thinking, structure, light, shadow, uh, material, you know, specularity, um, you know, atmospheric, uh, atmospheric perspective, things like that. All these things, bone, muscle, fat, all these things um, can be strengthened so much when you are able to visualize better. Okay, and that's what these, uh, these exercises are all about. So be careful with the time. You don't want to uh, let the time go past too quick. Remember, we only have 10 minutes to do this. You're not trying to paint the whole entire thing. What you're trying to do here is you're trying to extrapolate the most important things about um, your subject here. And you're putting it down like notes, just like just like uh, notes for an essay. Okay? It doesn't matter if nobody else can understand your your scratchy chicken scratch writing for your notes. The only person that needs to understand is you. And you do need to understand. Okay? So a lot of times um, when we're scribbling stuff down at a frantic pace, we don't stop and think enough uh, what does this line mean that I just drew down? Okay, you need to think about these things and you need to think, when I look back at this, how am I going to understand it? You know, we all learn the alphabet in uh, English class so that we can, you know, take all these little alphabets, take all these little symbols, write words, write sentences, and we'll all be able to understand it universally. With art, we don't learn an alphabet for art. And a lot of times we need to we need to create our own language, our own sketch language to be able to come back to uh, sketches and things like that and be able to understand what the heck we were thinking at that point. Okay, so let's go on to the next uh, question here, which is um, any tips for organizing a good Kickstarter campaign? Any tips on comics particularly? Um, Kickstarter campaign. So um, I've only done two Kickstarters, but both of them have been quite successful. And... Um, and one of them raised over a mil or half a million dollars. So there are definite things that I can tell you about my own experiences, but I don't know if those are completely universal. Okay, so as always, as always with everything that I say, and with everything anybody else says, if it makes sense to you, then fine. If it doesn't make sense to you, you don't have to do it. And maybe you shouldn't do it. Make sure that you rethink everything to see if it does pertain to you. Okay? I can only tell you what has worked for me. So the very first uh, Kickstarter that we that I did with uh, Chaos Dara, Jim Bryson, and Adam Jeffcoat was create the first ever... Uh, fully animated, traditionally animated uh, comic book. It's called Nico and the Sword of Light, and we were asking for, I think it was uh, 50,000 pounds, because at the time we could only make a Kickstarter in England or the US, and since three of us are Canadians, one is uh, English, um, English Adam <laughs> started the uh, Kickstarter. And it went really well. So, um, good organization, or or any tips on organizing a good Kickstarter campaign? Don't wait to hit your stretch or your your goal before you start planning your stretch goals. The other thing is, if you're shipping anything, you have to be very very careful that you know exactly what you're doing. Try to get the 
exact same product that you're going to be shipping out, package it, whatever you need to do, double box if it's fragile, things like that. Take it to the post office, see how much it costs to deliver to um, all the major places and the far off places. So if you're in North America, definitely get quotes for places like South Africa, Australia, because those are going to be a lot further. Um, and then get quotes for all the other ones as well, like, uh, you know, places in the U.S., places in Canada, different places in Europe, all the major places that um, you feel the Kickstarter is going to uh, attract. Another big thing, let's see, another big thing that really, really helped is um, trying to get other people involved. How do you get other people involved? So you want to think about this. So, you know, you get approached to share somebody else's uh, Kickstarter campaign. How can you get approached in a way where you would be more than okay with sharing that campaign. Perhaps it's an, there's an art book involved or something like that. Guest artists and you're one of the guest artists. So then you have a much more, uh, you have much more reason to share with everybody else. Um, if you, if you perhaps, uh, share somebody else's Kickstarter campaign and then in turn you ask them to share your campaign then that helps as well things like that um, but the success in a Kickstarter campaign is don't get too greedy with the money really because um, when you start seeing money collecting you know coming in or whatever it might be a lot of times we want to give more we want to give more things and so on and so forth and uh, a lot of times that's going to cause you a lot of problems and actually make the whole entire Kickstarter experience for somebody else um, pretty bad if they don't get their stuff you know today I was just thinking about this Kickstarter campaign that I um, that I helped support close to two years ago now I think I think around two years ago I still haven't gotten my stuff and this is hundreds of dollars that I you know ended up sponsoring or pledging right that would make me never want to uh, pledge for any of their stuff ever again you know un unless they do something miraculous uh, that makes me change my mind One other really good tip is um, if you feel like you're gonna you're gonna fulfill everybody's pledges, you know, by August, then on the Kickstarter tell them that you're gonna you know um, fulfill everybody's pledges by the end of September or something like that. You know, give yourself buffer time because almost always things will happen. Uh, and definitely think about your limitations as well. You know, a, a factory might be able to make a thousand plush toys, but that same factory might not be able to make, you know, 4,000 plush toys unless it had way more time or something like that. You know, certain factories are only equipped to do certain things or a certain amount of things. Okay. So hopefully that helps for anybody that wants to do a Kickstarter campaign. Um, yeah, by the way, you know, we did that schoolism campaign and uh, hopefully we will be able to sell subscriptions at San Diego Comic Con. Definitely come by if you are there uh, at the con. Schoolism booth 2042. And uh, the Imaginism booth is G6 and 7, end of aisle 800. Okay, at the Imaginism booth, we're going to have a new book, actually, uh, that we just printed out. And we just uh, finished, just in time for the con. So it'd be great to meet some streamers there, two streamers there. 
yeah, and you know what? If you come to me um, at San Diego Comic Con and uh, and you ask me for a special, the I made a bunch of wristbands. We made a bunch of wristbands, and and it says "punch laziness in the face." If you ask me for one of these wristbands, I will give you one. Okay, they're not really available at the con, but I'll have a I'll bring a few um, extra ones just because they're fun to make. I wear one every day now, so it reminds me in the morning. You gotta punch laziness straight in the face. And just get up, start doing stuff. Okay, next question here. Um, how to get rid of the shyness of displaying my art, my artwork to others? You know, sometimes what kind of before we actually get into that, um, you can see right now. I put away the photo so you can put away your photo as well okay just do it I know it might feel difficult at first but put it away right now and start using your common sense your memory things like that and try to draw the dog try to stylize the design of the dog, perhaps. What really made that dog feel like a dog? This is an exercise that you can do over and over again because it is easy for anybody to do, but it's actually really hard to do it well. And these, this is something that professionals do as well. You know, the very well-known uh, character des designer, Steven Silver, he, he does the same thing. He's actually told me he's done the same thing. If he wants to design a wolf or something like that, perhaps he'd draw wolves for a little bit, real wolves from photos, and put it away. And think about how he can take that knowledge and create, you know, um, a character design of a wolf. And you can see here that the pug face look how flat it is now it's a complete straight line going upwards just those are notes for myself to say I wanna keep a really flat feeling face and now I just add a subtle little tiny bit to give it that underbite that he has and uh, the back of the neck is very round you can see that the back is very straight just like those notes that I was saying um, as those notes that I was saying to take down as we were observing the photograph of the dog. So it's difficult, which is great, you know, and it really helps to start your day off right. If you're to do these exercises at any time, I recommend doing them right in the morning, right when you begin your day. And actually uh, start to schedule your day around this exercise so that nothing will get in the way of it. When you have consistency and effort, you can move mountains, you know, but it's, it's very much about the consistency and the effort that you put in. Um, next question is, okay, hold on a second, I got a copy question here. But the next question is, could you describe the feeling you had when you saw your designs on the big screen for Alice in Wonderland? Also, uh, you saw your name on the credits. Um, disbelief. <laughs> really, like when we got into the theater, we see the posters on the wall and all that stuff, and then actually, so we were in Paris, K. S. Dara and I, we were in Paris at the time, watching uh, the premiere of Alice in Wonderland. We go into this um, this private theater that they rented to show us Alice in Wonderland. And the uh, founder of the Cannes Film Festival was sitting 
like just a few seats in front of us. And uh, we go in and we see these seats saying reserved, right? These two re seats saying reserved and we're like, oh, let's sit beside those seats because um, maybe somebody interesting is going to sit there. And so we sit beside them and then the, the theater floods with um, journalists that also have a private invitation nobody sits in those seats later we realized that those seats were actually for us so that was really funny but I definitely remember watching the movie and just thinking it it looks like a real movie you know like that feeling where it's just like yeah it, it looks real but it doesn't totally feel real to me because it's just the whole entire experience is just so surreal and then you see your credits, you know, you see those, those credits come up and you're excited, you're really excited. And uh, I saw my credit come up with Kays and uh, our friend Michael Kutche, uh, three character designers, right? Kay and I were two of them and my name was spelt wrong. It wasn't C-H-I-U, it was C-H-U-I. And I remember the very first thing that I thought was, oh, thank goodness they spelled Kay's name right. Because <laughs> um, that would just be horrible. To me, it, that would be more horrible than somebody spelling my name wrong. Um, yeah, that was pretty much, that was the memory of it. It was fantastic. Um, let's go to the next question here how much have the previous live workshops cost I understand it always depends on the venue etc but I'd like to know approximately um, so it yeah it really depends on the venue the if we can get any sponsors to help um, with the cost and things like that but it hovers between around 200 US dollars to uh, 350 US dollars um, for an entire weekend. Okay, so for every workshop. And uh, like this, this one in San Francisco coming up, six people six workshops it's gonna be fantastic not only is it six people six workshops it's like a stellar stellar lineup with Ryan Lang formerly of Disney now of Marvel Studios there's Helen Mingju Chen formerly of Disney now art director at Paramount there's Jace uh, there's sorry Ian McKegg Holy cow, one of my all-time artistic heroes. That's going to be epic. Wes Burt from a whole bunch of video games as well as Transformers, uh, concept artist, Magic the Gathering, things like that. Carla Ortiz, you know, very well-known illustrator, fine artist, um, and works in live-action movies working on Doctor Strange, I believe. Um, and then there is Nathan Faux, one of the greats, one of the all-time greats, uh, you know, not just with his art, but teaching as well. You know, and all that um, for a weekend is, is quite quite life-changing honestly it's it's been fantastic and that's why we do so many workshops more and more as the years go on because people just can't get enough and it's just so fantastic not just for um, you know the people that are attending but definitely for me and the teachers as well you know just having good excuse to go out there and travel around meet people and uh, affect people's lives you know, passing on some of that knowledge to other people is a very, very wonderful, fulfilling thing. Um, let's go on to 
talk about this sketch a little bit, you can see that I'm the tones that I'm using here, they're not very different than the tone that I'm painting on top of. You could barely even see what tones I'm painting on top here. But when you do subtle, subtle uh, painting descriptions on, on your stuff, it's much easier to see where the painting can go because you can't really see anything too clearly. But do you get the slight suggestion of an eye? Yeah, you do. You get a slight, slight suggestion of an eye. Slight enough for you to be able to really use your um, visualizing skills and to imagine that eye exactly where should it be. Can you imagine it moving slightly up? Most of you can. Can you imagine the eye moving slightly down? Yeah. And this is what you do. You start moving it around. You start enlarging it, shrinking it with your mind's eye before you put it down. And if you really, really try at this, you really put in that effort, then you're exercising the right parts of your brain. And those visualizing muscles are going to get stronger and stronger and stronger until you can visualize more and more and more and not just the placement of an eye but the actual eye itself and perhaps hopefully even steps to create that eye so what step first what step second what step third and so on and so forth the other thing I want to mention is that perhaps if you're doing this right you're looking at your drawing there and looking at your sketch and you're thinking yeah, this looks pretty much just like the photo. But at the end of this um, little assignment here, when you look back at your photo, you're going to see that actually your design is quite different from the photo. And if you can see that and your photo, your, your design looks great, then you've really, really done this uh, exercise well. Okay, somebody's asking, um, how do you get that larger window to stay underneath the smaller window even as you're drawing and painting on the larger window? This is why, this is like pretty much one of the only reasons I, I went back to PC. Because with uh, Photoshop with a Mac, I don't think they really allow you to do that. They don't let you keep, you know, floating uh, windows above uh, the window that you're working on. It always kind of goes into the back. And that frustrated me so much that I actually changed computers and I went back to a uh, good old PC. Okay, let's go on to the next um, question here because I totally stop taking these questions let's go through a bunch of these questions so the next question is um, do you feel more comfortable working first in grayscale and value and then jump into color do you have any personal preference I definitely I feel more comfortable working with grayscale and value um, but as well I'm doing this with a purpose you know with these streams I want to make these exercises a gradual process right now this is the 15th uh, exercise that I've created for you guys so in the beginning it's gonna be very much grayscale later on we're gonna get into color more and more and that's gonna be really really fun but for many people it's very difficult to start thinking about not just values like you do in a grayscale but value combined with how much saturation and what kind of hue are you using all of a sudden puts thinking into you know a whole nother dimension and it becomes so much harder so stay with me here I know it it is like we were doing grayscale after grayscale but there is a purpose. You gotta trust me on this, and we will get into color. But the main purpose here is that we 
um, we make something where anybody can do it and they can get they'll become really great at art by the time they get through you know all the all the exercises okay so my own personal little goal here is to create exercises that will last a whole entire year I think that would be really great and at the end of the year you can go back and you know start it all over because even grayscale stuff hey you can work on black and white stuff all your life and still not get everything and that's the great thing about art you know you can just keep going and going and going and there's always room to go grow if you want to grow okay next question here how did you get comfortable drawing in silhouettes and adding in value first is there a certain brush you use um well is there a, I just this particular painting I use different brushes but this particular painting I'm just using a default brush because I want to do things quick and I don't want to mess around with too many different things that you guys won't have access to um, how do you get comfortable in drawing silhouettes and adding in values first it's just practice you know like I said I'm, I'm much more uh, comfortable just dealing with grayscale first instead of going straight into color even though that's something I need to do as well um, but it's just practice right the thing about this is as we start practicing things in art we get really good at some things and then those things whenever we do it it really impresses people and all this stuff and it's great and you're used to doing really nice stuff in that way but then when you try something new does your stuff look good anymore are you proud of it anymore not so much right because it's new and you aren't used to it yet and you're trying to learn you're trying to do things in a different way get used to it though don't worry about it it's all about the the routine it's all about putting in that that new kind of effort thinking in the new way there's always going to be frustrations but you know what leaps in learning come from working through great frustration so you got to keep going that's when most of your learning will happen is when it's after you go through a whole bunch of frustration and what I think that frustration is really is the the what are they called neurological pathways in your brain that think a certain way now you're trying to evolve its thinking so you're trying to make new channels in your brain and that's the feeling of frustration as those new channels are being made that's what I kind of feel like maybe that's where that's what frustration is you're trying to make new highways in your brain instead of those crappy dirt roads that you started off with now we're trying to make the Autobahn right so of course there's going to be frustrating feelings and stuff like that keep going okay next question here um, is there any plan to do two streams on the weekends um, I'm at work and never able to draw with you guys during a live stream there's always chances definitely but um, nothing planned right now since you know I'm still going through arm problems so I, I try to take it a little bit more easy on the weekends and actually my weekends it's kinda of like my time to get ahead and do things that um, that I want to do to get ahead of my schedule but never say never okay so let's go on to the next question here how do you get better at posing your characters especially from imagination what is your thought process when picking a pose for a character you made up on the spot and we're gonna be going through that actually okay so you can see I'm starting to put a little bit of detail on this little dog here and then afterwards I'm gonna start sketching different designs after this in different poses and things 
And really, that's when the visualizing truly comes in because now you have to visualize this little guy doing different poses. You know, how is it going to look when it sits down and things like that. Um, it is very much doing these exercises continuously, you know, um, regularly. Okay, now if your drawing, you know, if your drawing looks not so good and you're disappointed, things like that, and perhaps you're comparing my drawing to your drawing and you don't like your drawing as much, um, you know, don't, don't worry about big goals just yet, okay? Everybody's on their own journey. You gotta remember that. It's all about your drawings getting better than your drawings before, not getting to my, um, you know, perhaps my level. Perhaps you're a lot past my level, even even better. Um, just a random little thing. I see Calvin is asking, did I skip your question? I don't, you know, there are so many questions that i just been copying and pasting, so I don't know. I didn't mean to skip your question. Okay, so if you type it in again, I'll, I'll post it in. Um, or perhaps I just didn't get to it yet. Okay, let's go to the next question here. Um, but yeah, posing, a really awesome class on schoolism for posing. It's gesture drawing with Alex Wu and Luis Gonzalez. And actually, Luis Gonzalez has a, um, a class right now that's open for registration where you can, you know, get the premium version with the, uh, with the drawovers over top of your own stuff, you know, over your own um, assignments. Okay, so if you're interested, definitely sign up because Luis Gonzalez, uh, he's one of the people that teaches the gesture drawing class at Pixar. You can't really get any higher than that honestly I you know I would be very surprised if you could and uh, the first thing that I thought of after I did their gesture drawing class was why didn't they teach this in school <laughs> and that's probably what you're gonna be thinking right after you take the class because it's just broken up so well so nicely that um, Sorry, I'm just reading these questions. It's broken down so well, so nicely that it's just, it's almost like, well, yeah, of course, that's totally common sense. Okay. So I see um, Calvin, you just pasted in your question again. Thank you for that. Uh, I probably missed it because you don't type in question in big capital letters. Um, it's very difficult to kind of scan through, do all these different things and look at questions, you know, read everybody's comments. So I just look for a question, big capital letters, but I'll answer yours right now real quick. So you wrote, I just want to know when is the schoolism subscription programs are going to be released to the people that didn't donate to the Kickstarter project? Not sure yet. Okay. Uh, should be sometime in July, I hope. Might be in August. Um, sign up for the schoolism newsletter to to know okay to have the update if you downloaded this um, the file today the photo of Magnus then you can see that you you know you already are on the list on the newsletter for um, future streams as well as uh, you know schoolism news Okay, let's go on to the next question here. 
Oh, tons of questions coming in. So there's a bunch I didn't get to yet. Let's try to go through these right now. Um, at conventions, do you ever do on-the-spot commissions? And if so, how do you set up before drawing to make sure everything goes smoothly? I actually I don't take on-the-spot commissions because um, a lot of times Comic Cons are really just crazy and there's so many people and people constantly you know they're asking about things and stuff like that so I'm def I'm not the right person to ask about um, on-the-spot commissions let's go on to the next question when does Terrell Whitlatch's course become available at Schoolism. I'm actually going to be talking with her tomorrow about her class, going over um, some of the lessons that I've been watching. It's going to be great. I don't know when it's going to be available, but it's it's rolling. There's lots of really good progress. Okay, let's go to the next question here. Are you going to be at CTN? in November. Yes, I will. You would love to say hi? I would love for you to say hi. Okay, come on by. Uh, next question here. Tips on deciding what to focus on in your portfolio. I dwell in doing client-oriented or my stuff. I want to work for WOTC, uh, but I don't know how to adapt my work to the clients. WOTC. Do you know what that stands for? Oh, Wizards of the Coast. Do stuff that's complementary to it. You know, what I would say is do stuff that is complementary to it. So, in other words, same thing with pretty much every studio out there. You know, if you want to get into Disney, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Um, just do a whole portfolio of uh, Frozen drawings. You know, they already did Frozen. They have people that design Fro you know, for Frozen and all that stuff. They don't need another person to do some stuff that has already been done. Hey, big shout out to my buddy Peter Chan on the stream. What's up, Peter? Part of the Imaginism fam. Uh, good to see you. Incredible artist. Um... You know, do this is what I kind of picture, right? I picture it like um, when you come into the Imaginism shop, you're not going to buy an Imaginism pair of jeans off the rack. No, we're gonna come. You're gonna come in, and we're gonna look at you. We're gonna look at what you want to do. We're gonna look at your jacket and create a pair of Imaginism pants for you, for you and your jacket, you know, so it complements what you have. And it's not a copy of what you have. You know, rarely do people buy uh, multiple multiples of the same clothing, you know what I mean? They're always looking for stuff that's new and fresh but familiar in a way where it complements the things that they like to do. Um, and that's how I felt, you know, when we started to do, um, when we start to do stuff with the goal in mind of working in some live action films, live action film that's whimsical, fantastical, or just kind of a little strange. <laughs> uh, we started to do stuff that complemented a lot of the projects that we ended up doing afterwards. Okay, next question here. So, World of, uh, sorry, Wizards of the Coast. I think the most important thing is to, yeah, do a lot of stuff that complements the kinds of things, the kinds of illustrations that you love in Wizards of the Coast. But speaks 
from your heart is very honest and it's it's not a copy it's more like um, it's just more like something your version of it like the like doing a remake of a song you know in your own way Okay, next question here. Any tips on improving greatly at two fields of interest? I love concept art and animation. Uh, and dividing the time is tough. What do you think? I think you should just concentrate on one at a time. Well, I'm not telling you to pick. Should I do concept art or should I be an animator? I'm saying to just concentrate on one subject at a time because you'll get better at that subject faster. So perhaps for now, I'm going to concentrate on what I think would be the better thing to concentrate on. Um, first, you know, animation or concept art. If you perhaps um, stink at gestures and drawing and you want to do, oh, okay, it's 3D animation. So maybe you stink at gestures right now. I would concentrate on concept art with the idea to improve my gestures. Perhaps I'd, I'd do that first and then I would do the animation afterwards. I'd start concentrating on that afterwards. You know, if you are really um, if you're really good at something in animation but you stink at it in concept art then perhaps you study animation a lot more in the beginning so you understand oh these are the things that are needed when you're designing characters for animation you know um, the main thing that you want to think about here as well is that there are rarely any unrealistic goals but there's plenty of unrealistic deadlines, which, you know, if you have an unrealistic deadline, then you're, goal, you're not going to reach your goal. And some of your goals, you know, might be really big. Um, many of you out there thinking, you know, you want to do all these great big things, which is fantastic. But if your goal seems just too far away, just do one step at a time. Okay. Um, the other thing that it's it seems off topic, but it isn't, um, is to have a goal just about yourself. You know, the kind of person you are, and things like that. You know, what is your goal for yourself? So, for ha perhaps um, to be a a morning person. Perhaps it's to, you know, stop, stop being so doubtful of yourself, of yourself, things like this. Think about what those goals are, because those goals will make you a better leader. And when you're a better leader, people give you more responsibilities. You know, success to me is to be a person of peace positivity, patience, happiness, discipline, and self-control. I really feel like if I can reach that, then everything else falls into place. All my goals will fall into place. Of course, there is one more thing that you need to really concentrate on, which is... Um, that more than half of the bat battle is done in the planning. Okay, so plan well. Don't just have your goal and jump right in. Um, let's go on to the next question here. Do you have any tips for a person who wants to uh, wants to transfer from boring character design? to storytelling and illustration. I don't want to do characters with boring poses on gray background. 
okay well um you know my best advice is just to do it just start doing it start creating whatever kind of storytelling you want if it's storytelling through illustration start making a book just start doing it you know it's the best way to show people that you can do it you can do the thing that you are aiming to do and if you don't get you know a job by that time when you're done your book make another book and just keep doing it because um, the world has no choice but to notice you if you're good and consistent constantly putting in that effort constantly putting in that passion okay let's go on to the next question how do you okay that was a small floating window question next question do you also do line art sometimes while working professionally? Yes, I do. Um, and you can see that I'm drawing with lines right now. After a point, you know, painting kind of becomes like drawing, and drawing kind of becomes like painting for me. Um, if I just want to use lines, then I have to consciously think, okay, I'm just going to use lines. Otherwise, I would want to use everything in my arsenal of, uh, you know, artistic uh, skills that I've developed to put down whatever idea as quickly and as efficiently as possible. Okay, next question here. I live in Europe, so if I want to work in U.S., I need a visa. So that means I need to finish some college, right? If you finish college with a degree, it gets easier to work in the U.S. But also, if you have, I believe, three years of experience, um, then that can qualify you as, a, you know, kind of like the equivalent of having a degree. So you don't absolutely need it. And... It's funny because you think about it, okay, one way is you pay a lot of money um, to an institution for years and years and years. And a lot of times we pay this money without even knowing who we're going to be learning from. We just know the school that we're going to. You know, that's one way, pay a whole bunch of money to an institution to learn whatever. And... A lot of people do well with this, but I'm just saying the other way is working for three years where you're actually making money. So one way you're losing money for years and years, and then you got you know your diploma and you can get into the United States, or you can work for years and years, make money, and then go to the States. <laughs> it's like when you look at it that way... Um, it makes it a lot kind of easier to see what the better choice is. But not everybody can learn by themselves. Okay, When you don't have self-discipline, you cannot learn by yourself. And I would recommend going to school because then you have a teacher that's going to bark down your throat, hopefully you know, getting you to do your homework. Um, let's go to the next question here. So next question says, what is your process for layering in the light and shadow? Do you have any effects on the layers? I don't have any effects on the layers. It's actually very basic. And most of the time, if I'm just painting, f you know, uh, for a client or whatever, or for myself, I should say, uh, most of the time I don't even use layers except for different elements uh, of things. It's just straight painting. But if you are interested, I do teach a digital painting techniques class on Schoolism. I'll put a link in the video uh, when we put it on YouTube. So next question here is, uh, why did you choose that view as your reference? 
Would a better view of the head and face uh, make for better reference? Well, it depends on what you want to do. I really liked that photo because um, the profile was very interesting and just like the shapes were really interesting. Um, yeah. And you can see now I'm starting to do a bunch of different little designs uh, of Magnus. Okay, let's go on to the next question here. I just want to know when the school is in program. Okay, it's going to be released to people that didn't donate to the Kickstarter project. Answered that already. Another question, Bobby, have you ever done uh, work for Magic the Gathering cards? I don't think so. <laughs> I've done stuff for um, those Blizzard trading cards. Those are fun. But that's really like, um, I like doing them. It's just the hard part is finding time to do it. Okay. Uh, next question here. I've missed a good chunk of today's stream, and we'll do the exercise later. So for this exercise, shall we uh, keep the dog more or less the dog and not turn it into another creature? You know, you can. You can totally change it in, into a creature if you like. Um, what I suggest with all of these exercises is that you keep your main focus on visualizing the stuff that you're going to paint down before you actually paint it down. You know, as much as you can, you try to visualize it clearer and clearer. Okay, next question here is, uh, how often do you draw on paper away from the PC? I go through phases. You know, sometimes I'll just paint on the PC nonstop. Sometimes I'll just want to fill up sketchbooks nonstop. Yeah, it just kind of goes through phases. Same with like the topics I like to paint. They'll go through their phases as well. Okay, I really want to work in the US, but I don't know if animation studios are, in, are encouraged to hire foreign artists. If they want you bad enough, they will for sure hire you. Okay, work on you. Work on your your skills, your tool set, your exposure. Start showing your stuff. Um, and you know what? Just to kind of, since it is Thursday, I'll give you a throwback Thursday, okay? When I was interviewing Mike Minola about Hellboy and there was like a drawing contest. You know who won the drawing contest? It was this uh, unknown artist named Dave Raposa. You know, who is uh, a you know, well-known artist now, doing very well for himself as far as I can see, um, you know, and because of that, I became an admirer of Dave Raposa's stuff. I believe the same thing with a um, very talented artist named Charles Santoso in Australia. Uh, I really started to notice his stuff so much more when he started to participate in little drawing exercises that we had uh, on the stream way, way back. You know, since then, he's worked on the Lego movie uh, and a couple other really cool uh, films. Let's go on to the next question here. How do you manage your time, especially to balance work and life? Do you follow schedules or just go with the flow schedule <laughs> I schedule everything just about everything these days because there's so many things to remember and nothing really gets done if you don't schedule it or not as much gets done 
So I'll schedule it and then I'll have it color coded actually so that the most important things are coded with a more saturated uh, tone. So it just catches the eye even more. And then I'll just go from one task to the other until either the day is done or all my tasks are done. Um, let's see. Last little last little uh, question here. Let's go last question. How do you manage your or sorry, the Venture Time painting is awesome by the way. Oh, thank you. Um, how long did it take you to draw it and uh, was it fun detailing the somewhat simplified characters? Super fun detailing simplified characters. Um, yeah, really, really fun. Really fun to paint. I forget how long it took me to paint it, but I remember it was done within a day. So, um, yeah, I'm not sure. Okay, so there you go. That's some really great questions. Thank you so much for tuning in, everybody. And uh, definitely post your little uh, Magnus designs, Magnus illustrations here. Um, I would love to see it. I'm sure uh, everybody at the studio would love to see them. Just hashtag it, ChewStream. And... Uh, be on the lookout for the next stream. Subscribe to the live stream, or, sub, or better yet, subscribe to the newsletters. Or better yet, just download the, the working file, and you will be automatically put onto um, our newsletter Okay, for the next stream. So thanks a lot, everybody, and uh, take care. Have a wonderful day, and see you next time. Thank you.